Good evening and welcome to the October 23rd meeting of the Milton Select Board. Uh, our first item of business is to go into executive session. So we will, uh, I will move to enter into executive session to discuss, to discuss pending litigation, which is case number um, 19 uh, miscellaneous uh, quadruple 037, uh, the Town of Milton Board of Appeals versus the Massachusetts Housing Appeals Committee, believing that the discussion of that pending litigation um, in uh, open session could compromise the litigating position of the town and to discuss strategy with collective bargaining, believing that the discussion in open session could um, uh, compromise the position, uh, the um, negotiating position of the, of the town. Um, so that is the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded, and that will, this will be a roll call vote. Ms. Collins? Yes. Mr. Zulis, yes. Mr. Farrington? Yes. Ms. Conlon? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. We w are now going into executive session, and we will be back in uh, about a half an hour. Thank you. And we are back in public session. Item three, the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join us as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for that. Uh, item four, public comment. Is anyone here for public comment? Seeing none, uh, item five is the Milton Landing RFP, which is going to be deferred without objection to the next meeting on November 6th. Item six, uh, this is the discussion approval of the Eagle Scout presentation. I don't see, um, I don't see Mr. Hiss here, so I think we'll, we'll just defer nice. that one. We'll move on, and maybe, maybe that'll... Maybe that'll come up later. Uh, item seven, I don't see the chief grant here yet, so we'll, we'll have that one uh, later. And so item eight is the, um, uh, the Senate bill with respect to um, a property tax reimbursement for child school tuition. I do see Mr. Burke here, so I think we can proceed to item eight. This is the quickest meeting I've ever seen. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Burke. I'm Jerry Burke. I live in Center Street, and I'm here to talk about Senate 2259. It's a bill to uh, sort of recapture and close what I think is an inadvertent but long overdue um, mistake, in my opinion. Uh, before I begin to talk directly about the bill itself, I want to read the definition of charitable organizations, which I found in the Division of Local Services Taxpayers Guide to Local Property Tax. Uh, it will come into play with some of the language that's present in the bill. A definition of a charitable organization, a charitable organization for property tax exemption purpose is defined as a corporation or trust established for literary, benevolent, charitable, or temperance purposes. Nonprofit status is not sufficient nor is exempt status of state or federal tax purposes. The organization must be organized for charitable purposes and must actually operate as a public charity. The dominant purpose and activities must benefit the public at large. So, we all pay property tax to support our community and all the services it provides. Paramount is the education of the town's children Setting aside those in true need of public assistance, all residents should contribute to the cost of public schools and do so through the property tax. Whenever you live in Massachusetts, you are entitled to send your child to the public schools of that town. The per student cost of, of a child's public school education here in Milton is over $15,000 and accounts for almost 50% of the town's operating budget. Milton is a very desirable place to live for many reasons. The success of our schools is one of them. 
but our expanding population is creating a challenge to financing of our schools, a challenge that needs to find additional financial support. Dare I say, before a whisper of a two and a half override. The state allows for cities and towns that opt in to accept out of district students who are not residents of the town to attend their public schools. Cities and towns may charge tuition because these out of district students are not part of the property tax flow. Each school committee votes whether or not to participate and Milton traditionally opts out because of the lack of space. A correctable flaw exists in this system. Over 30 Milton students whose families reside in tax exempt property are in a sense out of district. These students do not pay tuition thereby placing a shortfall of approximately $375,000 because the families of these students do not directly or indirectly pay property tax. These families receive housing as part of a financial package provided by property tax exempt entities. The entities are the beneficiaries of the tax exemption. The direct link between financing public education and the property tax is clear and unambiguous. If a resident is a member of this community and sends their child to the schools, they should be treated as all other property tax payers are included as out of district and pay tuition. Now this bill, we have a great opportunity. I'll admit that this is an uphill battle for this bill, but I'm here to ask are an endorsement of the selectmen. It's not a local approval, vote is not required, but it will give some momentum to our elected officials, Senator Timothy, who, uh, who filed this bill at my request, uh, will get some momentum and some traction when he goes and tries to advocate for this bill. He tells me he's in support of it, and that's why he filed it. So I'll yield any time to Milton uh, other people that may be in, impacted by this, I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Comments and questions from the members, Mr. Wells. No. I oh, mean, I thought oh, I thought you're raising your hand. No, I'm listening. Um, I just the only thing I do want to say is I believe Representative Driscoll spoke with him about it. He also supports this bill. Great. Other comments or questions from the members. Um, Mr. Wells. Right, no, go ahead. You go oh, first. so 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 I will uh, I will say, uh, uh, um, and Mr. Mr. Burke and I have had a discussion about this, and and uh, I'll just uh, say uh, what my view on this is. Uh, you know, I've I've um, I started working on the pilot program about two and a half years ago, and I'm a great believer in it, and I hope that uh, we have agreements by now with the nonprofits to provide a a, a fair level of of uh, revenue. To the town from the nonprofits, uh, that hasn't happened. Uh, we have uh, achieved agreements with the nonprofits. There is some contribution from Co Curry College, some contribution from Milton Academy, but um, but um, we're not where personally we're not where I think we need to be with uh, the three nonprofits, Curry and Milton Academy and, and Beth Israel Deaconess. However, with respect to this proposed legislation, and this is the discussion that that I had with Ms. Burke. I go to the, the, the Massachusetts Constitution as interpreted by the SJC, um, and uh, I won't read uh, the constitutional provision, although it is a, it's beautiful language about what we, what we aspire to as a people and what we, should, what we, should, what we want for our children. Uh, it's part two, chapter five, section two of the Massachusetts Declaration of Rights, and it talks about the wis wisdom and knowledge that we try to give to those and to, to our children and to those who come. And that section of the Massachusetts Constitution has been um, interpreted in a case that Mr. Burke and I discussed, a case from 1993, uh, McDuffie versus the Secretary of, of the uh, uh, Executive Office of Education. And in that case, um, there is a, 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 a in, at least in my mind, a fairly clear interpretation of the Constitution, um, uh, the constitutional provision um, that states, uh, and this I will read uh, because I think it's 
I think it's on point with respect to this specific legislation. Now, there may be other ways to do it, as you suggested, Mr. Burke, but, um, and, and the language that I uh, look to is, it says what emerges is also is that the Commonwealth has a duty to provide an education for all its children, rich and poor, in every city and town of the Commonwealth at the public school level, and that this duty is designed not only to serve the interests of the children, but more fundamentally, to prepare them to participate as free citizens of a free state to meet the needs and interests of a Republican government, small r Republican, namely the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And so, so that's, that's um, and that's interpreting the, the Constitution. So that's where, where I sit on the, on the legislation. And, and um, uh, while, I, while I applaud the, um, the direction of it, because, uh, because I think we, we do need some more help from our nonprofits, I think that my view is that this, this road, uh, at least as currently constituted, may not be the, the right road to go down. So that's, uh, that's my thought. I thank Mr. you again yeah. for providing that case to me, yeah. and I did review it. Yep. I'm not a constitutional lawyer, but yep. they do make reference uh, that one of the first clauses in the uh, state constitution, they refer to uh, the seminaries in yes. the College of that's Cambridge. Right. <laughs> that by itself is unconstitutional this day yeah. and age. Yeah. Um, it also goes in great depth, requiring cities and towns early on in the funding of public education. Mm -hmm. They make no bones about that, that the that city early on at one point in time when they were trying to get public education up and running, they w really were difficult with the cities and towns who did not get on board on that. Now that said, I believe it's a little premature at this point in the legislative process to just set this bill aside. Um, quickly, there's House Council and the Senate Council. That's the funnel, that's the last stop before the bill ever gets voted on. Those two offices are charged with the constitutionality of any bill. Mm -hmm. Also, this is a vehicle. It may very well be changed. And if there is some idea that the, the shifting of the fund on the, on the parents of the children or whether or not on the nonprofit, that can be tweaked mm -hmm. by amendments in the committee. And we're a long distance away from the, from the constitutionality of this. This bill is a vehicle. And so I ask you that <clears throat> your vote or your, your whatever you intend to do tonight is to just get the general gist of the of the trying to accomplish um, fairness and equity to all the other taxpayers in the town. Now, it's probably an internal discussion among faculty and administration about how they would want to handle it. That can be done also. But this is a vehicle, this should be driving public discussion. I want to hear publicly what's being said. Because like you, I'm amazed, I'm appalled that there is such resistance to, quote, doing the right thing. Now, I know that the, your, the, the pilot committee endorsed this bill. So the endorsement comes from the intent, not necessarily the, uh, whether or not it's, it's constitution. Because if it's constitution, it's not going anywhere. But the intent is, look, it's fairness. And that language that I, I read about the charitable, I'll leave it to the public that will view this tape. Do you think that our uh, big business hospital, uh, $364 million endowment educational facility, are they acting as a public charity? Other questions, comments from the members? He, Mr. He, Wells. First off, I commend you for doing this. I don't, I don't even know. I, do you have kids in the schools now? I take it you don't. Oh, they're, they're all. Well, that's what yeah. I thought. Tuition link is done. And <laughs> well, I hear the chair, and I did not. I was not aware of that case, but I get where you're coming from on that. But the word that strikes me, and I, I've spoke with you, I've followed this, I've talked to the superintendent, I've talked to the assistant superintendent. I've seen the struggles both of the prior chair of the pilot committee and the current chair of the pilot committee to try and bring this 
to some type of positive resolution for, um, to help the town. You'll see tonight we're going to discuss that we're going to have to reopen our, um, have a special town meeting this year to make up a, a budget gap that we have in, in the existing year. That you know financial burdens are very hard, but I like the word vehicle. It is a vehicle to drive the discussion, and I just believe that if if this can help us, particularly in our pilot, pilot efforts, and in alleviating the financial burden that we're faced with, then so be it. And I would support it in that aspect. Um, because, as I say, both of you have tried numerous avenues. And I'm in my third year here, and we're still sitting here, and, and really with the exception of Curry, we've been spinning our wheels in the mud. And um, I was completely unaware of this until the superintendent made me aware of this last year, and they actually gave me the, the financial dollar figure that it costs us. It's a half a million dollars a year. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. That's almost our whole budget shortfall for this year. Um, so I don't know what will happen. I agree with you. Um, it is an uphill battle. But one of the things that Representative Driscoll did say to me is in, in the legislative process, and, and you're far more versed in this than I am, that between first and second readings and committees, that that's where things get spun out, and that's where sometimes good law comes. Um, so in that aspect, I do support it, and I thank you for, for doing this, because I know it's an awful lot of work, and you don't have to do it. You're a resident of the town like the other 20-something thousand who live here. You didn't have to do this, and, and I appreciate the fact that you have. Thank you. I will also add that, um, and that we all are aware that support of public education and financing public education is in the mix right now. Um, this could get rolled in um, as, a, as a possibility, but to tackle the non the exemption from property tax, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And I think recently when we hear that BU doesn't pay any taxes, has a sky rise dormitory overlooking the child's, doesn't pay any taxes on that building. When they, when they brag about the billions of dollars they just uh, raised, it's, it, it's, it's a great talking point for tax. And there are cities and towns like ours that have similar situations um, that, that will, it, it, City of Boston is, is working big on their pilot program, as you know. So when we all start talking together and getting together on this, it, as I said, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. But it's never too early to do the right thing. Other questions, comments from the members? I'd like to thank Jerry, too, for all your hard work on this. I appreciate, and I think the board appreciates, I know the pilot committee definitely appreciates you being a driver of this because uh, uh, it's important to have uh, a non-elected official, a non-town government official, a private citizen, if you will, really um, get out in front of this, advocate for it, start uh, beating a drum for this. And, and clearly you have done that. And to the extent, Jerry, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, if, the, if the, the broader intent of a bill like this was to serve as a jumping off point, okay, to, to initiate or, or act as a catalyst for a discussion, okay, to drive a dialogue, um, if that was the larger intent, because you yourself said, you know, it was an uphill battle, and I think Senator Timothy had mentioned that legislatively, this was an uphill battle, but um, I'd like to see this bill accomplish that. And I think this is a step in the right direction. It's a first step, a small step, but it's a step in the right direction. And it's important, too, for you to be doing what you're doing as, a, again, a non-elected, a non-government official, because frankly, um, sometimes this message falls on deaf ears depending on who's delivering it, okay? So if there's a different messenger, perhaps it will start to resonate with, with those people. I've <clears throat> gone on record. I've said this before, I'll say it again. I believe that Milton Academy and institutions like Milton Academy uh, have a moral obligation to give something back to their host community in the form of hard dollars, in the, in the form of money. Um, uh, I, I believe it even more strongly now than I did when I started. So uh, to the extent that this bill will help accomplish that, then um, I'm in support of it. And, I, and I'd like to see this discussion flourish and flower and become broader and bigger. Thank you. I, I, I do have one question. Has the pilot committee thought about going directly to the trustees? 
Milton Academy? Uh, we have, and we have done so. Oh. Mr. Wells. Did, oh, could you share with, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, go, go ahead, finish, no, go go ahead, ahead Could you share with me the trustee's response? I mean, were they? As soon as I get one, I will share it with you. Oh, <laughs> deaf ears. To this point, yes. Really? Yes. So to your final point, or not, not to my final point, to one other comment that you made, when you referred to the word two and a half, you used the adjective, I believe, whisper. And uh, having worked on many Proposition two and a half override campaigns here with so many citizens, you can't win a Proposition two and a half campaign by whispering it. You have to beat on a drum and do it and, and convince the residents. And this body here, as we, if we haven't seen it yet, I saw it this week, we just received a proposal from the seniors trying to find a way because it's very, very difficult to, especially those who are empty nesters, to stay in their houses with the pressures that get put on the tax, you know, to run this government here. So um, you've articulated it very well. And while it may be an uphill battle, it clearly, to me, seems very reasonable. And it is, a, it is a loophole that should be closed. I don't think that a, a, somebody who benefits from the exemption from property tax should go to the, the academy, not to someone else. It's, well, I'm gonna be blunt. I think Milton Academy is, is playing the system, uh, is gaming the system. When they, made that decision however long ago they wouldn't give me that information how long ago they decided that the lowest school would not admit the faculty i don't know how long ago that was but what they did was they just pushed that expense right onto the town and if i'm correct 30 kids at sixty thousand dollars a year tuition now 1.8 million dollars approximately so we have to push on this even if it is uphill and even to your case that you refer to I think if the authors of the Massachusetts Constitution at the time that they put pen to paper if they were aware of this they might have had a different opinion because this is that he, he Jerry's I mean this is it is like a sleight of hand. Like we wouldn't have even known this. And 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 I and I and I just I just and, and just my final two things. I keep saying my final two things, but I'm on a roll now. You know, Curry has stepped up. He's one of the three, and the other two haven't. It's really not fair to Ken either, to the President Quigley, that he is he is making a, a greater effort than the other two. And I think as much as we owe it to the residents and, and to everyone who lives in this town, we also owe it to him. Um, so, I think you've got something here. I don't know how it will come out, and it may not. The chair may be correct in the, in the constitutional appropriation, but it's definitely a vehicle and it's definitely a discussion that warrants us having. If people of goodwill get together, there'll be a solution. Absolutely, and, 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 and to that point, there may be a different way to attack this. Right. It may be a, there may be a way to attack it through the nonprofit the definition of what constitutes a nonprofit um, for charity. for me or charity thank you for me um, when you talk about public funding for public education and how to enforce uh, whether someone can attend a public school if if certain if they haven't paid for it or that if someone hasn't paid for it for them that's an issue so the, there there is a principle behind the the case law and the constitution for me that is very important. So, that, so I, 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 we may not disagree on the goal. It just, it just mean it, we, we may disagree on the means to the goal. I, I respectfully suggest that, having done this for 19 years in the Senate Council's office, that this bill can be reworded and tweaked to be to to remove any doubt of constitutionality. But the figure is there. The intent is there, and. If you want to add the caveat when you vote on endorsement, please do. Um, 
but I am sure that what you sh what if I'm hearing this correctly, then the endorsement of the select board should be pending constitutionality or any change. The spirit and the intent of Senate 2259 should be supported. Are you asking us, Jerry, to do well, that? Well, that's what I'm. That's what my, the whole purpose. My suggestion is. would be: let's tweak the bill first and then vote on it. Yeah. Ms. Collins. Um, I uh, have some real reservations based on um, the constitutionality and, and that case, but also the fact that um, teachers who, uh, and perhaps staff too, I don't know, who enjoy this housing uh, as part of their pay package, they are, uh, I, I realize we could treat them as out of district and they're not paying taxes, but some of them are town meeting members, they, they uh, are, are on committees, so they, they are part of the town and I really feel like this is a, a, a great vehicle to, um, to go to the charitable institution, the school, and to work in, through that mechanism um, because it is something that is a loophole and, uh, and, and I, I would support working at it from that angle. Absolutely. I appreciate your thoughts, but the two gentlemen to your left have been trying that for about three years and they haven't gotten anywhere. Well, maybe there's legislation that could help with that. So, Mr. Chair, uh, perhaps, a, oh, go ahead. Go I, ahead. I think the point is well taken. I, I will call Senator Timothy tomorrow, his office. I'll report on this, what transpired, or he can turn on the TV. Um, and we'll see if, how soon the, 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 the I, I think it's obvious that the intent is there, that this ve that the vehicle is there, mm -hmm. and that, that it should probably start to be um, probably redrafted to bring it into line, put the burden perhaps on the school, on the entity. Other comments, questions, Ms. Just, Ms. Collins? Just briefly, Mr. Burke, thank you for coming in tonight for presenting this. Um, I can't support it in its present form. I think the chair made a you know some important remarks, uh, and so I support what the chair had to say about what the current state of the law is, but you know, you've, you've come in and you've put yourself out here on cameras and putting forward an idea that a lot of people you know, ha have criticism of the town or have an idea, but they don't really pursue it. So you've, you've brought it forward and you've, you've done some work, so I, I admire that. And Thank you. perhaps there's some way of um, addressing the problem that you want to get at in another means, and, and that may be something we can revisit. But at, at the present time, I think the um, I would I think I would not be in support I, I would not be in support of this bill as drafted. But I, I do thank you for coming in and for and for the work you've done on this already, Mr. Mr. Wells. Chair, perhaps a compromise might be to and to Mr. Farrington's point as well would be to have Mr. Dennehy. Perhaps we have a conversation with Senator Timothy's office and think about how we can collectively help him mm -hmm. put this in language that has its greatest likelihood of success are of change. Um, maybe we can approach it that way because I would like to see it get into a form where we could support it, all of us, our state legislators as well as us, as well as this board. Um, perhaps that may be a, a, a compromise we could take or, or a tactic we could take right now to help this versus we already know as you've stated, you're climbing a very steep hill here Let's try and do the best that we can for all of us to kind of grade that slope a little bit, if we could. Well, well it's not me. It's it's our elected officials. Uh, I get it. So I, I get it. Bring it back. I get it. So, I, I and just as a side note, nobody. It, although there is some, ooh, it's that's kind of tough. It really isn't. Um, but I haven't. No, at least no one has said to me uh, that they that it's they're not on board on it. You're correct. And the legislators that I've spoken to, you've piqued their interest. You've piqued yeah, their interest. It, 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 somehow, and I, I don't have the resources, but I was hoping that other cities and towns similarly situated could be the word could get out, and then it's just a, a but a grassroots effort does take a lot of time and effort and, and body. So, um, how come you're not on the pilot committee? Uh, <laughs> I want to know why you're not I on the pilot committee. We might have an opening. So I don't have the patience. Knows. I don't have the patience. Uh, <laughs> some of the 
<laughs> some of the uh, I read the well I'm not I'm not going to get into it but some of the co contributions and they so they pay their electric bill you know so, geez. any other uh, comments questions uh, Mr. Burke let me let me reiterate what's been said thank you uh, for this thank you for your work on this thank you for meeting with me and discussing um, uh, discussing I the legality of it yeah. and uh, and thank you for coming in and putting yourself out there and uh, I guess it's to be continued. Thank you all very much, and thank you for your service. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so uh, uh, I, I think we, we might go. Uh, we have Mr. Mr. Darius here. Why don't we go to item nine, and then we'll go back to item seven, uh, Chief Grant. So if we, we go to item nine, since Mr. Darity is here, which is the um, the reappointment of the MCAC representative. Um, uh, we have a, a document that uh, no that lays out uh, uh, some of the things that have been done over the last um, what was it uh, June, July, Six August, months, yeah, four, months. Uh, four or five months uh, since Mr. Doherty's appointment, uh, interim appointment. He was appointed through October 31st. This is our last meeting until then. Um, uh, so. Um, uh, any comments, questions, or actions by the members? I'll make, Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion to appoint Tom Doherty of 247 Adams Street as the MCAC representative through October 31st of 2020. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Um, any uh, discussion? I'd like to just thank Mr. Doherty for all of his efforts on behalf of the town at the MCAC. This is an important post, and there's a lot of interested residents in this issue, so um, I'm grateful for all the work that he's done. And uh, did you want to say something, uh, oh, Tom? Hey, Tom, do you want to okay. just uh, talk to the microphone? Sure, sorry. Just say thank you to the select board members for, for their support. Um, uh, thank you, have Tom. A seat, have a seat. Sit yeah. down. Um, uh, he gave you two minutes on the schedule, yeah, so you know. might as well use them. We, we, have, we have a little <laughs> extra time. Um, uh, I, will, uh, I will add to what uh, Ms. Conlon said, um, in addition to his work, um, uh, on behalf of the town and, and as part of that work, Mr. Doherty, I think we mentioned at our last meeting, was unanimously elected as treasurer and, a, and, an, ex and an ex officio member of the executive committee of the MCAC, which, is in, which are important posts within the MCAC. Uh, and, uh, and we think, um, uh, and I, I think that's, uh, he deserves great credit for that in within only four months, uh, earning the trust uh, of all the other members, it was unanimous vote, a unanimous vote, earning the trust of all the other members of the of the MCAC, and uh, I think um, that that will be beneficial to the MCAC and can only only benefit our town as well. Any other uh, comments, questions? Or? Yeah, I think I think that that role is helpful because it it's it's helpful to all the communities. You pitch in, and it, the executive committee looks over the processes, and of course the treasurer looks over the financial the status. So. It's, it's nice because it, it's right in the middle of things. Um, I attended those meetings anyway, but uh, it also is a way of uh, helping everyone if, if possible, right? Or trying to. So that, that, was, that was nice that that came up. So. Any other uh, comments? Well, Ms. I, Collins. I just wanted to say thank you um, for, for stepping up and becoming the rep, but also for, for your um, willingness to help other communities as well. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. Right? <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it'll be an, it's an interesting project. Mr. Wells. Thank you for the chronological update that you provide to sure. us as well. And, and um, my two colleagues here, who this is really their lanes, Katie and Michael, but I know this is very much like the resident before you. This is a very steep hill you're climbing against the federal, I mean, it's, it's a big mountain, and uh, we appreciate that. Well, I live on Milton Hill. Yeah, so we get we, that, we get that. But, you know, it's amazing, we, we all see it every, every day, depending upon the wind, depending upon where you are, right? People just, um, the, the, the effect on people is um, continuing, and it's difficult, young and old. Um, I hope we can get some avenue toward engagement around the 4L, 4R, 2733 uh, elements. And, and lastly, I'll say that, you know, I, I, I do believe there's a parallel process that has little to do necessarily with MCAC, which is the federal government and Congressman Lynch. And if there were to ever be a change in the Senate next year, that same dispersion legislation is something that 
we are, we'd be, you know, 13 months away from her. So. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Um, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Thanks Dark. a lot. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Um, item seven, uh, Chief Grant. Uh, Good evening. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. We've um, had a pretty active last several months, um, starting with uh, two recruits that are uh, recently graduated out of the Boston Fire Academy. Uh, now they're out on the street. Um, the academy was an interesting collaboration. Uh, during the period of time that I've been chief, I've always sent every hire that I have out to the Mass Fire Academy in Stowe. Uh, yeah, I like the fact that you know you, each and every recruit that we put through is getting consistent training. Um, but there's been a significant log jam uh, up there. Um, so between Boston Fire and the Metro Fire Chiefs, uh, Boston stepped up and put on academy for just Metro area fire departments. Uh, it turned out to be a big success. Uh, like I said, we've got these guys on the street now for about a month. Uh, the, they were slated to attend the fire academy in January, uh, so now they're out on the street. Uh, there, was, there was a cost uh, to it. Uh, the State Fire Academy is free. Uh, Mr. Dennehy and I discussed that as we were coming down to the end of the fiscal year. Uh, you know, we were able to put the money together uh, and you know, I believe the offset of having the people in there as opposed to the overtime was well worth it. Uh, like I say, by, by all accounts, the academy was a, a big success. They are going to look to do it again in the future, hopefully on a regular basis. Uh, they're also looking into funding mechanisms to hopefully take that burden away from us. Um, but like I say, in, in this case here, we have them on the street, you know, three or four months ahead of when they would have even attended the academy. Uh, I've, I've got one more recruit in the wings. Uh, he will be attending, uh, a, which will be a new location for them, again, in an attempt to alleviate some of the backlog. Uh, Mass Fire Academy is opening a location in Bridgewater. Uh, but just to let you know what the backup is, you know, he's, he's on, the, on the agenda to enter the academy in April. Uh, so it, it is a significant <coughs> burden. So you know we're you know really hoping that the uh, the Boston Metro collaboration continues. Um, over the course of the spring and summer, we've completed uh, uh, several training exercises. Uh, all the members went through auto extrication drills. Uh, over the course of the summer, they all did uh, pump evolutions. Um, where we take each and every member and run, run them through every one of the positions, um, you know, just to keep things fresh. We take advantage of the warm weather and get them outside. So coming out of that, they'll, they'll go into SCBA training and evolve that into search and rescue in the colder months uh, that we can do inside. Uh, new equipment-wise, uh, We've uh, entered into uh, new utilization of new software. Uh, that's been up and running and going well. Lieutenant King's kind of uh, supervising the implementation of that. Um, we're also, as part of the, it, it was through a grant that the state of Massachusetts, I don't remember I, what, um, you know, what the exact title of the grant was, but it was through the state of Mass for uh, technology. So we updated the software, and along with it, we're uh, putting computers uh, on the fire apparatus. So that portion of the project is, is ready to move forward as we speak. That, was that the, com the compact, Community compact, compact, compact yeah. grants from last year? Lieutenant yeah. Governor was out here last, That's right. last summer. Yeah, yeah late, late last spring, yeah. I believe, right? Yeah. Um, so like you say, that's, you know, half of that is done and in place, and the, the next portion is, is ready to move as we speak. Um, you know, we're at this point kind of trying to get over the hump. We've had some apparatus issues that are a, a little bit concerning that uh, uh, our, our two most recent purchases, engine two being six to seven years old and engine four being one to two years old, 
you know, are having some relatively significant issues that really shouldn't be taking place for the, you know, the year of the apparatus. Uh, so I'm paying attention to that, and you know, it, it, we are completely uh, E1, uh, mm -hmm. every piece of apparatus at this point in time, and, and over its history, we've had very good luck with them. Uh, but like I say, I'll, I'll you know bear watching on this, and you know next time around we may recommend that we do some shopping, um, see what happens. I'll I'll, I'll keep uh, uh, Mr. Danny apprised of that as it goes along. You know, not looking to rush to judgment, but we you know we are having some issues with it, and you know like I say, it gives me concern. Uh, we'll be sending the uh, apparatus one at a time up to Haverhill. Uh, to have the computer work done, so and like you said, we really haven't been able to jump ahead of it because you know we've been down, you know, an engine. Sometimes we've been down two engines over the past several weeks. So hopefully we'll get resolved and get beyond that. Um, also, as far as equipment goes, we put in um, new turnout gear um, that was uh, probably a mid-spring acquisition. Uh, that was through uh, assistance to firefighters grants that we attained the funding uh, for that. Um, and you know, as with, uh, uh, with looking at possibly new apparatus, we had, we had been with the same maker for a couple of uh, iterations of the turnout gear and thought it was time to, uh, to take a look. Uh, and uh, and all, the, all the guys looked at it and you know, came to the conclusion that we went with this stuff. It's, you know, and, uh, you know they're, they're doing well with it. Much lighter, much more breathable and maneuverable for them. So uh, we also added a third set of um, uh, basically cable-free jaws uh, of life. Um, we had put two into effect uh, about two years ago, um, and and the thought was that we'd study that over the course of a couple of years. And you know they just happened to have a string where you know. We, we trained heavily on it and then actually utilized it a few times out in the street and the uh, the results were you know very good so we've gone and you know we've gone to battery powered on all of them so we no longer have any cables restricting us uh, so you know, like I say busy summer a lot a lot has taken place uh, just this week a matter of fact they went into service today uh, new thermal images going on all the apparatus so, a lot of changes. Thank you, Chief. Uh, comments, questions from the members? Mr. Mr. Wells. I, I noticed, I think I might have mentioned this, I noticed Quincy's, as you know, E1's been, they're like the Ford of fire trucks. But I noticed Quincy, the most recent engines are, I think, Pierce? They're not E1's. I think Quincy did go with uh, a Pierce ladder truck, yeah. I believe. I, saw it, I think it there was one other piece. Um, I think there were engine five on West Quincy. Is, yeah, brand new. yeah, I knew there was two of them. Um, you know, it, it's funny. I can remember the you know the warrant at the capital committee when I was purchasing engine two, uh, approaching and asking just that. You know, or, or, do we have enough money? Is you know, is this where we should be going? And, and like I say, we had done so well with E one over the years, um, but uh, as Richard said, it's you know, it's you know, it's a Ford. Um, you know. There are pieces of apparatus that are more expensive, um, you know, and yeah, you know, that beer is watching. You know, do we get more out of it? You know, so again, not a rush to judgment, but uh, you know, it it is worth watching at this point in time. Do you want to keep that second piece, that piece that you were going to, that second as a second spare? We we had. Quick talks on that, and, and it may be something that we, you know, drag our feet a little bit on moving that. Um, I think, as far as engine two goes, I think we're getting over the hump on that one. We'll we'll see, um, but that is a possibility. A couple of us had had uh, talks about Doesn't that. Doesn't cost you anything. You got it. It's, it's, it's there, it's there right? right? It's in your right. arsenal right now. Right. It's there, and it's in. You know, it, it runs. It's it's old and tired, but. <laughs> It can be used. And just for the record, if, if I might, Mr. Chair, the, for the viewing audience, when the chief talks about a, an engine or two being down, there's what's called mutual aid in the public safety realm. Chief Wells knows this uh, well. 
well versed as Chief Grant lives it every day is we get coverage from other communities. So there was a ladder truck and a, uh, an engine truck from Boston that were here on Tuesday, Chief, when you guys were working on a call on Maitland Street. Tuesday, yes, we had a, a basement fire over there that went to a second alarm. Uh, and the, the way the second alarm response works is that we do, we get an engine and a ladder that come in and, and cover uh, the headquarters station. Uh, so what they do is any more routine calls that come, they respond to them. Uh, to the fire, we get a Canton engine and a Randolph ladder truck uh, at each second alarm. And then as you go, you know, Boston will shift to the fire and Quincy and Stoughton come in and it, it, it evolves to an enormous incident if, you, if need be. Um, a, a good, I, I didn't even think to mention that, but um, you know, a good instance of, of that was uh, the, not, not the Maitland Street incident, but the uh, Franklin, Franklin Street, Street incident yeah. where you know, they, they had a r relatively minor fire. Uh, but we were down two engines at that point in time, so you know, Deputy Linehan put that second alarm on, you know, w without the level of work requiring Is that the it. mattress? That uh, I believe it was a ceiling fan. Oh, ceiling fan, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't wind up at the incident. Um, but, uh, you know, like you say, you, you can utilize that, you know, it, for, for different incident, you know, different reasons, and this was a good example of you know, we might get caught short with a piece of equipment down, uh, so let's get these guys running early. So it, it, it really is a, a good system. And you know, we're fortunate enough that we're actually, you know, members of two organizations, uh, Metro and Norfolk County, and we utilize them both extensively. Other comments or questions? Ms. Conlon. Chief, um, just budget-wise, we're only a quarter of the way into the year, but how are you, things tracking in terms of overtime? Are you where you need to be for this time of the year? Will the new recruits it's, help with that budget? It's early for us to put a gauge on that. You know, it, it's usually about halfway through the year, around January, you can re really get a gauge. Um, last year we were okay, um, so I, I don't expect it will be significantly different than we were last year, so uh, you know, I believe we'll be fine in, in that manner. Um, but you're so heavily loaded, you know, at the start of the year and at the end of the year with vacation time that it's it's hard to get a gauge in the in the early months. And the incidents report, are things tracking pretty much house, you know, fires and medical emergencies. Yes, they are. are. Much on um, the track? Yeah, and, and you know, it's funny. I, I always, you know, in preparation for the budgets year to year, I always take a look at them and. You know, we really do. We, we run from a low of about 3,800 per year to a high of about 4,200. So it really averages out right around that 4,000 runs per year. Normally I have those uh, for you guys during this check. Uh, and the reason I don't is that uh, the new software hasn't been installed on my computer yet. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm a little behind the times on that. Other comments or questions? Mm -hmm. He said it long enough to let's let him go home. <laughs> <laughs> he had a late night last night too. Chief, yes, uh, we did. <laughs> yes, you did. Chief, any, 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 anything else uh, on the horizon for the next six months that, that the board or the residents should be aware of? Or have you? I, I know you've you've gone through a pretty exhaustive list. We yeah, we've worked pretty heavily with what we do, and, and it's funny, you know. And I probably shouldn't be as long as I've been in this chair at this point, but. Uh, you know, I, I'm always nervous to make sure we get through the year. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I, I tend not to spend the new equipment uh, until late in the season, just in case something unforeseen happens mm -hmm. and requires, you know, a, a bigger, uh, you know, a, a bigger purchase early on. So, you know, we are looking at replacing some things. You know, one of the things on the list is is to replace the hydraulic airbags. Um, and that probably should have been done a long time ago. Uh, they're, that's they're, on the list for this year? That's, that's on the list for this year, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're about as old as, as I am on this job. Um, they still function, but it's one of those, what they're, what they're geared to do is, you know, lift vehicles. Um, you know, if somebody's pinned under a bus, we can, you know, lift it off of them. So it's one of those things that, you know, you, you hate to have something like that malfunction on you, so we're beyond time. So that's, that's in the queue to be done and, and has a high priority. Uh, and, and there's a few other things that, you know, like you say, are, um, you know, 
well on in experience, you know. So we're always looking at, like I say, the, the thermal images that just came in the other day. Uh, I, we didn't get as long a life out of the past ones that we're replacing as I would have cared for, um, you know, but they just didn't hold up. So, you know, there is, there's a shelf life to all these. So, you know, some of these we're going to my second iteration of. Um, so it's, it's always a work in progress. Other comments or questions? Can I just add one more thing while we have the chief here? So we've confirmed Saturday, November 2nd at noontime to dedicate the bench to Brian Carlson in front of Engine 2. Great. So the chief's been working with uh, Parks Department and Public Works about getting it installed. The bench is in and just waiting to be installed and we'll have a dedication uh, on that Saturday at noontime. Yeah, that'll, that'll be a very welcome addition down there. And, and you know, we're in the beginning stages of working on a second one for down there as well. So nice thing. Great. Uh, I think that existing bench was there when I was in the second grade. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it probably was. I agree. Um, we, we came back one day to see it running around the corner of the then 5 and 10 still. Yeah, no <laughs> All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thanks, Appreciate Chief. it. Appreciate yeah, the Thank you. Have a good Thank night. Yeah. All right. Uh, I see uh, our counsel, Mr. Freitag, here. So uh, without objection, I would like to skip to... Item, item 17, I believe it is, which are the town meeting articles, which is what I believe Mr. Freitag is here to discuss. Um, is he going to talk about the air rights agreement, or are we uh, as well? Or um, uh, I think I think no. Okay. Uh, There's more town meeting articles. Let's, yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's start with the town meeting articles because that is certainly of moment. So we'll move to item 17, town meeting articles, um, and um, there has been a. Uh, some of these articles involve the budget, and there has been a development just today with respect to the budget articles. Uh, so um, uh, I don't know if Mr. Dennehy, you want to address that, or Mr. Freitag, and we can we can have a discussion about it. Sure, I, I think um, that's the most pressing need as we as we sit here. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I was on the phone call today myself, uh, Chief Appraiser Bob Bushway, Town Accountant Amy Dexter and uh, Town Treasurer Jim McAuliffe, we spoke to uh, our Massachusetts Department of Revenue representatives, uh, Amy Hannafeld and Tom <coughs> Guilfoyle. Um, there was some concern that when we, uh, town meeting in May had approved uh, the budget uh, and subsequently the solid waste contract came in um, at the number uh, exceeding Public Works' budget. As we started to work through the budget articles, um, there was a comment that was made that we presented to DOR to make sure that we were crossing our T's and dotting our I's that um, town meeting had mo been moved from October to January um, to accommodate for this uh, so we could kind of figure out what we were going to do working in coordination with the finance subcommittee with the school committee finance subcommittee to try to come up to with um, some ways to identify uh, reductions from the overall budget while also taking a look at some of the, a better look at some of the ro local receipts. Uh, we were informed today that the town would not be allowed uh, to set the tax rate, which normally takes place uh, and is submitted in late December uh, at, after, after that. So we have to set the budget, we have to balance the budget again at town meeting prior to setting the tax rate. So the net net of that is we had planned to have a town meeting to address some pl planning board articles and the budget articles uh, and a couple of other articles on January 13th, and that's what we were all driving for, driving towards. Uh, because of the information today, uh, it, uh, we need to move up the town meeting, uh, at least with respect to the budget articles, to December 2nd or December th and Decem December 3rd, Correct. which is a which is a big change, uh, and so we need to discuss exactly how we want that to take shape. Will it be just the budget articles? Will it be all of the articles, if possible? And there are other boards, particularly the planning board, that are that are impacted by this, so we'll have to get their input as well. But uh, but we need to move quickly on this because because this is a change. This is something. This is a departure from what the town has done previously. Uh, in balancing its budget mid-year, um, and so and so we need to uh, we need to adapt to this new this new reality. So um, uh, so I guess the question is um, uh, well we can go through the the budget articles or I think it's probably better first 
to decide how we want to deal with this. Do we want to? Do we want to suggest? Uh, do we? Do we all agree that we should have a town meeting on December second and December third? And then, if we do all, if we all agree that with that, uh, what should that meeting be comprised of? We may not be able to decide that without the planning board's input, but we at least we can have some discussion of options. So, with that, uh, thoughts, questions. Um, if I might, late, late this afternoon, I did send an email to the planning board chair, uh, the director of the planning department, um, uh, uh, superintendent, assistant to superintendent over at schools. Um, I neglected to put the school committee chair on that. I will send that along with the town moderator and uh, Clerk Galvin, uh, just to put them on notice of the situation that had developed late this afternoon. So I'm waiting to finalize that. Um, Milton High School does have the auditorium available on December 2nd and 3rd. That's been confirmed by Jen McCullough and uh, Karen Viveros up there. So, so uh, comments, questions, thoughts uh, by the members? Of the members, Ms. Com. I think it's important that we try to keep it to one night. Early right, December, sure. it's going to be a very busy season, so we should try to limit this to just December 2nd. Um, I understand we need to reserve the room, but I think we should limit the articles so that we're confident we can get through them in one night. So, so that would suggest we limit the articles. I don't want to speak for you, but uh, but one option is to limit the articles just to the budget articles for December second, and then perhaps come back on January thirteenth for the uh, the other articles. Is that uh, is that? Uh, I think we could do more than the budget. I mean, there's you know, for instance the the easements. That's a pretty standard article that apparently got left out of the May warrant. We have we. Somehow we didn't include that one. So I, and maybe the betterment article. There's a, there's a few, possibly even some of the planning board articles. If we think that there's not going to be a lot of discussion, I'm not, I'm not sure about the planning board articles, how, whether the, that's controversial or not, the, the associate member of the planning board, or whether there's been broad agreement. But So we'd need some input from the planning board. But I, I think there could be more than the budget. Mm -hmm. Do we think it's possible to accomplish everything? Um, to accomplish everything, um, and, and that would mean we would have to have a full, a fully baked warrant, or a, or a warrant that addresses all of these, would have to be um, prepared and distributed by. They need to be in the homes uh, by November 18th, mm -hmm. which means they need to be mailed by printer probably, uh, yeah, that Monday that week, probably to the printer by the fourth. And I know the warrant committee, who was also included in that email today, um, would is starting to hear them Monday night. Ms. Collins. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought you. No. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, no. Uh, I I agree. One night, um, and also that we can probably get through more than just the budget. But I think we should be extremely strategic. Um, the the sewer betterment uh, and some a, a few of the others. Uh, but I don't support then coming back in January. I think that it's too much for the warrant committee. It's too much for the clerk's office. Um, I, I, I think that, that we can be strategic about the ones that can get pushed off to May. To May. To May. Uh, I, Mr. Wells. I think that Tom and he's astute enough to realize that even with what we have here, that they would get this done in a night, given the time of year that it is. I think we get. I think we've got to accomplish all this one night, given what we have before. It's right now. All right. So we have a. We have. A, it sounds like we have some, some, competing thoughts about whether, what to include, uh, in our newly scheduled December, town meeting. Um, I, we can all agree that. Um, I think. <laughs> uh, well, we all agree that um, items are, are, are the warrants. That are, that are number two, three, and four in our uh, agenda, which is the amendment to the appropriation of departmental budgets, the appropriation of available, available funds to balance the FY2020 budget, and the amendment to the Stormwater Enterprise Fund budget fiscal year 2020. We have, we have draft articles uh, for that. I think we can all agree that those should go on December 2nd. So uh, why, don't we, why don't we move on those and then and then and then take it from there. And Mr. Chair, I think there's a question as to whether the appropriation of available funds is needed. I think that was a question we had for town council. It's possible that that could be combined with the appropriation for department amending the departmental budget. Mm -hmm. So, um, if that can be combined, it's it's you know, it's even one less article. But into one article, if it can be, I think Kevin and, and his colleagues are reviewing that. 
Um, so yeah, I, I think we should vote to submit them as they are, and if we can always combine or eliminate one of them if we need to. Right. Okay. So subject to subject to your advice on combining those two, perhaps we we move to uh, we have a motion to to include um, to include those three articles for our December second town meeting. All right. If you want a motion, I'll move to um, include in the warrant for a December second. 2019 special town meeting articles two, three, and four relating to the budget. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right. So now um, let's go to uh, let's go to item or um, item one on our list, which is the Milton Landing revolving account, um, and and whether we include that in the December. Uh, I think we're going to have to meeting. put this tied to our RFP. I mean, it's going to be, we've got four months of work on this now. We're ready to go. I, I don't see that generating a lot of, yeah. uh, I don't see that being a big. It's more of a ministerial yeah. Uh, yeah. article, so I, I tend to agree. Any other uh, comments, questions, thoughts? Yeah. Do you want All a right. motion? Yeah. Uh, so motion. I'll make a motion to include, are we going to give it a number? Uh, it's the first one that we have. It's the Milton Landing revolving account, um, uh, and I believe we have language on that. I do, and I, I do have one. I'll make the motion, and then I'll. Um, I just want to get back to it. I had so many here. I'm going through them all. Okay, so I'll make a motion. This is to establish a revolving fund to see if the town will vote to establish a revolving fund for the deposit proceeds from the rental and lease. A portion of 25 Wall Street, Mill, Massachusetts, starting fiscal year 2021, which begins July 1, 2020. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Just one question. Mr. Wells. Will we have, so on 40, it will, if we were to work this on 41, I'm sorry, 41 if, off, if we were to get this one, this would require another article. If we want, want, want the money to go into another. Yes. You should have separate funds. Yeah, for we, can each that, we, we can do that. We can do that in a different time. Uh, in, mm -hmm. in a different time. I'm yeah. okay. If I can Mr. Just Mr. Point Mr. Out, thank you, Mr. Chair. There are there are two articles there. The first is to create the fund, and the second is so that the fund will uh, be able to, on a year-to-year -year basis, continue to hold the funds from the previous year. So That's it's, it's actually a, a two-piece. Right. Two articles. Because otherwise, they would go to the general fund. Yes. Okay. Could we put that in one article? Or does it have to be two? It's has to be two. This is taken right from a Department um, of Local Services right. informational guideline okay. release. So, Mr. Wells, uh, uh, if you'll take a friendly amendment to include the carryover and expenditure exactly local option right. article. Yes. All right. So that with the front with the amend with the amendment, the motion is to um, to include those two articles, the Mental landing revolving account articles, in the December town meeting. Um, motion's been made. I believe in second. And any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right. Now we go to the sewer betterment. Uh, appropriation, which I believe we have a, a, an article on, and I, I believe the suggestion we heard earlier was that that would probably be something that we could, we could, <coughs> pardon me, tackle uh, in one night of a December town meeting. So, um, I agree because this is going to help some residents of the town. This is something to help mm. the residents affected by this. Yes, I, can, I agree. No one's going to make them up. Oh, so, so, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to see if the town will vote to appropriate a sum of money to design and construct sewer lines to provide municipal sewerage disposal for Randolph Avenue between Ottawa and Gun Hill Street. Said project to be subject to assessment of betterments, a portion of the cost of said project in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Laws Chapters 80 and 83 and MGI and, and to determine how said appropriations shall be raised, whether by borrowing or otherwise, to authorize the select board to purchase take by eminent domain or otherwise acquire easements in certain property for said purpose and to determine what sum of money to appropriate for the purpose of said acquisitions and to act on anything related thereto. Do I need to include, Kevin, do I need to include the language on the costs or is that enough for the motion? No, just the motion, just the article language should be enough for the motion. Do we have a second? second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? I just one Mr. clarifying question. This was related to a couple of those um, larger estates uh, in that stretch of Randolph, right, that were on septic yes. and they were having some issues? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's right. 100%. That's right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All You're right. getting there. 
Uh, we're getting there. Um, so now we have, uh, I'm just going to take them in order and we can, we can discuss them. Uh, the, um, uh, well, before we take them in order. So now we have, uh, depending on whether uh, two of them get combined, we, are, we either have three, four, five, six. We either have five or six, depending on whether two of the budget articles get combined. So, um, uh, why don't we, all right, so let's go to item six, which is the home rule petition uh, with respect to exempting the harbor master from civil service. Uh, Mr. Wells. Again, Mr. Chair, simple, and I, I believe that both Rob Driscoll and Senator Tillity, by getting this done now, they, they will have it done legislatively by the end of this session. If not, we're going to have to wait another whole year and then into another legislative year. So, um, in other words, this is this is something that was unseen. You know, had it been a paid position, it would have been removed 20-something years ago when all the other jobs were taken out. It just it wasn't a paid job then, so it wasn't on the radar. So. I make a motion to see if the town will authorize the select board to petition the general court to enact legislation in substantially the following form, provided that the general court may reasonably vary, vary the form and substance of the request of legislation from the scope of the general provisions, public objectives of this petition, and act exempting the position of harbor mass in the town of Milton from the civil service law. Do I need all of the Motion. Motion has been made and seconded. Um, uh, any discussion on including this? Um, I will say I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I may not know enough about this yet, so I'm not sure how I feel about it. That doesn't mean it won't pass very quickly and, and, and expediently at, at town meeting. Um, but I but I do offer that. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm in favor of including it on the warrant. Um, I don't know, um, uh, but, um, and if the general view of the board is that this will be easily passed or easily dealt with at town meeting, then, then we can do it. I'm just, my only hesitation is that I'm not sure, uh, and I need to learn a little bit more about this um, before before I make a decision. So, so Mr. I've, I've tried, I've had numerous discussions with Tonka Paul King, I've yep. been trying to find ways around this, Yep. and he has recommended very strongly to us that this is the road to take. Yep. So. Okay. Um, any further? Uh, Ms. What Collins? are the implications well, if you uh, exempt it from the civil service? What, 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 what's the meat? Uh, what's the heart of the matter here? So, because like, uh, town administrator to, can't appoint anybody now unless we apply the rules of civil service. So this would be a civil service position, civil service benefits, where every other job, I believe, I don't think there's any other than like the police and fire. Um, every other job in town hall have, have all been removed years ago and. Even talking to Mr. Krohn, who was the executive secretary then, he said we didn't even. He said it wasn't a paid position. We didn't even think of it because it was a volunteer for so many years. I was actually shocked myself when Paul first said to me, "I'm like, what?" He said it's covered on the provisions of civil service. So, oh, go ahead, Tony. Who's Paul again? Paul uh, King is with Murphy Hess. Oh, gotcha. Ms. Collins. No, I, Tony. Um, I think sort of ask, ask the question, I guess, I guess I was wondering what your reservations might be, but you may not know yet because you haven't. Yeah, uh, well, part, so, so, so right now, um, if we were to get a, uh, a harbor master in, um, uh, in the, in an interim basis, we couldn't, uh, given the civil service law, it wouldn't right. make sense, as I understand it, to get someone outside uh, and have the town, uh, the town administrator appointed. Um, one way to do it was, would be to go through the police department and have the police chief appoint a harbor master. Um, that would take it within civil, and that would be within civil service. Um, and so the question is, do we want it, I mean, that's the ultimate question, right? Do you want it in civil, civil service in the police department, or do you want it outside? So you don't lose the, that option. The police department. So uh, you, don't, you still don't lose that option. So as we discussed yesterday, if Michael decided that he wanted to still house it in the police department, let the police chief fit it and post it in the police department. It doesn't, it's a civil service position. If you choose not to, you can't. So you could still do this in taking your option and do that, but that's the only option you can use. You can't right. use any other option. That's exactly right. So, so under the current, under the current uh, reality, uh, the only way to do this would would be to have the chief appointed within the police department. 
and uh, and because it's not outside of civil service, we really don't have an option for Mike, uh, the town administrator, to appoint it. So, um, so I haven't teased through all of the, you know, all of the aspects of that. So that's my reservation. Right? Um, um, uh, and if it came out of civil service, if we appointed, if we appointed, uh, or if you know someone was appointed within civil service, um, uh, in the interim. Would we then be hamstrung um, if we tried to take it out of civil service? Um, that's and that's that's a little bit of a concern that I have. I don't uh, so. think you could. I, it'd be an awful steep hill for you to do it with right. a person in the position. I, right. I don't know how you could do it. Right. So that and, and so the 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 the, um, the byproduct of that could be the would be that the position could go unfilled until we had this change made. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me we need to make well. We may need to make a decision. Is it important for us to fill this in the interim, and then think about the options long term, um, or um, do we just want to wait and uh, and wait till wait till uh, this is uh, uh, no. wait through the home, till the home rule petition is approved? So that's 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 I, I think one of the issues. So go ahead, Ms. Conlon. I'd like to know: Does the town administrator have a preference or a recommendation on this issue? Um, I, I, th I think, and I know it's an agenda item later for tonight, um, I don't know what type of quality candidate I would get to know tomorrow, right, if it didn't originate in the police department, right, um, the way it currently sits. Um, but that's not to say if it's taken out of civil service that that doesn't open up the pool of candidates. Uh, but in the, in the short term, with potentially the RFP coming out the door, I think it, it needs to exist sooner rather than later. And then um, if the home rule petition should make its way through the legislature, um, then, then we could move forward with that. But at, at this time, I, I would not have a candidate if I was so chosen to be the appointing authority. And to the other point, and, and I've had numerous conversations with town council on this because they say I had no idea. <coughs> and you can tell me where I go wrong. Kind of, I've spoken both to town council and to labor council is that if we take it out and it winds up in any, if it were to wind up in any department, the current department of town, whether it's police, fire, um, it would require a, C, a, C, a change in CBA, a, some language of the CBA, and, and town council is pretty strong in that with us. But that was the way that you could do it. Um, but either way, to the, to the scenario you've talked about, A, E and this, B, we still need to do this one way or another. I mean, I don't want to, we've got so much going on down there now trying to get our ducks in a row that have been neglected for so long. This is a key component of it. All right, so so the motion's been made and seconded. Um, any uh, any further, then the, this is a motion to include it in our December town meeting. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so we're going to include that. And we think that that will be done in one night. Um, all right, uh, next one is the authorization of the select board to accept easements. Uh, and um, I believe this is a pretty ministerial article. Yeah. I'll move that we include the article to authorize the select board to accept easements. I'll second. In the I'll second. Motion been made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Aye. Oh, sorry. Aye. Oh, that's all right. Aye. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> all right. Uh, article, the eighth article listed, amending the general bylaws to allow electronic voting. We have a, an article on this. Is this something that uh, we think we can include and it would be I don't uh, know. finished in <laughs> one night? <laughs> Um, uh, comments, Ms. Conlon. I think we should get the input from the chair of the electronic voting committee, and first of all, his availability in early December. And I mean, Tony had made a good point that this would be a good time to you know, showcase this equipment and mm -hmm. have people try it out. Um, is the vendor going to be available? So that's a good early? point. I mean, so I think Frank Schroff will make himself available. Can the vendor line this up and turn it around? So that's a really good point. So it probably doesn't have a lot of pressure in the first week of December <laughs> to town meetings. Um, that that's also a good point. Uh, 
from what Frank, from what I recall, when Frank made his presentation to us, that the tech behind this was was very, very uh, uh, basic. So my guess would be yes, um, but uh, you know we don't know until we ask the question. So, um, so we should probably hold on this one. Do we? Well, if, or if we hold mm -hmm. tonight, is it out? Well, that's a good point. So I did reach out to Frank earlier tonight through email, mm -hmm. um, and with that. Just that question. And did he respond? Are you available? No, he hasn't responded yet. But are you available? And do you think the equipment would also be available for demonstration in early December, knowing that there has a slight bit of training has to take place, um, whether it's the IT department or the clerk's office or whomever's going to own them for the mm. night, two nights? But how so about for the town meeting members? Is it, is it going to take some training there too? Like, oh, can we just go to one? It's how much time do you think? We were aiming at a one night meet town meeting. Do we really want to do it that night? We're starting to get a full um, agenda for that night, and this is going to be new. And as easy as it is, I, I'd say we move it to the May town meeting. Yeah, it just I, makes that's sense. That's my sense. Yeah. Right. Given, given the pressure of, of this, you know, the pressure of doing it in December, I think, I think that's right. I think that's in, right. In addition to that, it also requires writing a recommendation, revising the bylaw, mm -hmm. and that. We have a lot on the Warren Committee's plate right now. There's a lot of recommendations they need to come up with. On the budget, I think if we can come in with a proposal to them with the school committee, then that makes those articles easier. But there's still a lot of work for them. Okay. All right. So unless, unless anyone feels strongly. Well, I, I still feel strongly. I'm still going to vote in favor of keeping it. So do you want to have a, you want to have a, go, have a motion to uh, keep it in the, on the, on the dissent? So actually, you should so you'll make the motion, and I'll, then I'll oppose it. Uh, yeah, I'll vote. I will vote. Okay. You can make a motion to include it. Okay. And then we can vote, and then I'll second it for uh, Point and then of we'll discussion. Vote. Yeah. All right, that's fair. Um, let's see, where are we here? It's a, 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 it'd be a yeah. motion. To okay, get I make a motion um, to include, uh, amend the general bylaws to include, allow, to allow electronic voting. And I will second it for discussion purposes. Any, any further discussion? So just one question. Why do you, so you think we should try and do it? And you think we should? Yeah, hundred percent. I think Bob Hiss can can move through this thing and, and lead a town meeting uh, effectively enough where we can include this and still get through this in one night. And and I don't think the possibility of not getting through this in one night should preclude this article from being included in the war. What about the Katie's point though about having to rewrite the bylaw? That. It'll take an hour, tops. I'll do it. Um, How about if um, uh, Mr. Welch? What, what if we? What if can we? Because my 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 bigger concern, I kind of agree with Tony trying to want to try it, to want to try it. My bigger concern is, um, do we have to know? Do we have to decide tonight? So that's a good point, and I thought of that. And my suggestion is this: let's vote to include it. We'll Ending. wait to get some background from Frank. If we feel we can't put it, pu pull it off, we we um, hold an ad hoc meeting. You know, three get a quorum and vote to you know remove. I don't even know if we need. We could could we approve it pending the approval? Of That's another the Electronic buy law committee. Uh, we should. We, I, I I I wouldn't be in favor of of um, of making our approval subject to our a committee's approval. I, I just think this has momentum. Effect. And I'd hate I, to lose momentum. I, I don't disagree with you, Tony. Um, I I still think my you know my, my judgment on this is that it's too much because we're you know we're, we we've been hit with uh, this new information just today. We have to move up town meeting from January 13th to December 2nd. It's going to put a lot of pressure on on all elements, not all elements, but a lot of elements of town government, particularly the Warren Committee. And so I I just I just think it would be too much to to try to do all. Of, do do uh, we, we to, to do all this? So that's my that's my take on it. I, and I and I agree with you that we, it's worth trying. I just think given the given the new reality, I, I just think it's too much. Yeah, so I'm torn, but I tend to agree with the chair. I, I am too. I'm too. I, I'm, and no one knows. Are we at the? Are we here at it tonight? I mean, does it have to be tonight? The, the warrant's been closed. Um, we are, and we, we 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 go in front of the warrant committee on Monday night. So I think we owe it to the Warrant Committee uh, to tell the Warrant Committee on Monday night, but particularly given the, the short time frame here, I think we owe it to them to, to have what we think should be in the warrant 
as of tonight so they can start their work. Right. And in as Ms. complete Collins. a form as possible. Yeah, exactly. I get it, I get it. but I, I, I would, I, I agree with Tony on that, I love this case. You know, not given all this other stuff, just it almost seems like it'd be a perfect time to do it, but. All right, I, uh, Ms. Collins, can, can Collins. I, up, uh, I guess a, a suggestion or a question, Mr. Chair. Um, if we're gonna be meeting with the Warren Committee Monday night, perhaps we can post it as a meeting of the full board and add an agenda, and because I think we actually have to have a vote to cancel the January meeting and schedule this mm -hmm. and move it up. Um, obviously, we're not reopening more and more deadline has been closed, but and maybe add that on to the agenda, because I think we Monday need night. to, I think that's kind of fundamental to this, we need to take that vote to cancel mm -hmm. January and, and um, schedule December 2nd. He would do that Monday night. We could, we could do so that. So that yeah, we, have to, we should post that. So, so who is it? I think Melinda and I are both planning to be at the Warrant Committee on Monday night. It's Monday night at 7. Mr. Wells. Do meeting? I can go. Okay. All right. So we'll, so we'll do that. It has so. been posted. We posted it today. For us. For attendance. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll actually post an agenda uh, yes. that will include a vote on changing the date of the of town the special, meeting, of the yeah. and we and we can include um, we can include a vote on the electronic voting if we want. Yeah, could um, be, in the right. meantime, maybe we could check in with yeah with Mr. Shrove. Yeah, all right. Can you accept that, Tony? All right. Yeah, yeah. that's all right. great. Thank you. So, so given that, do you want to? So we can defer on that. Do you want to defer sure. on the motion? All right. So we'll defer on that motion. We'll, we'll withdraw the motion, and, and we'll take that up uh, Monday night. So we'll put the um, the uh, electronic voting bylaw on our agenda for Monday night. And an agenda item to change the date of time. Correct, correct. So it's posted for 7 o'clock for attendance at the Warren Committee. We'll change that to add 6.30 meeting with two agenda items. Well, no, actually, well, I think we, we have to meet after, don't yeah, we? Yeah, what I would say is post our meeting, post a meeting of, of our committee um, uh, at 7, and uh, then we can take action. Uh, we can take action during that meeting when we get, after we get feedback from the Warren Committee. That, does that make sense? So are we leaving, are we submitting the article and then subject to withdrawing it on Monday night? I think I, I, my, I'm more comfortable, um, and I think Tony was, was fine with withdrawing that motion for now and considering okay. it Monday night, I think. But, but you can change. So, no, so mechanically, how does that work then? So Monday night, everyone gets on board, they vote in favor, and then and then we And then we vote okay. to, to, to place it on the warrant. All right. You know, um, or, so the other alternative is we can have a motion now to um, to accept it, subject. Well, what would be subject no, I like to now? Yeah. Keep it the way you're going. Okay, let's do that. Okay. So, so it's better. Sure it's cleaner. We'll, second bite at the apple on we'll, night. we'll get us. We'll, we'll, we're going to have it on the agenda for Monday night. It's going to be on the agenda. All right. So that motion is withdrawn. Uh, the next one. Uh, the next three are the planning board articles, um, and um, since it's the planning board. Meeting, I mean, we'll have to get their feedback mm -hmm. on on whether they can, whether they'll be ready on December second. Um, Are they coming Monday night as well to the Warren Committee? That I don't know. Um, the, looking at the Warren Committee's agenda, which has already been posted, review, review, discuss of new warrants for the January town meeting. Oh. This doesn't say okay. with whom. So um, on these, out of deference to the planning board, my my sense is to is to vote these on, and then maybe we vote them off if the planning board wants to, and, uh, and you know that's that's my sense. But uh, obviously, what do the members think on that. Do we know if both of these are needed? Is one yes, of them a I, duplicate? I, I, I spoke to Cheryl, and actually, they 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 end up being in two different places, so they're complementary. Okay. I just asked her that. Of one another. Yes. We this need is the both. associate member. Yes. Okay. So essentially, there's two. Substantively, there are two. There are three, um, three um, bylaw amendments. But substantively, it's two because it, uh, two of them relate to the associate planning board associate member. Right. Okay. So, um, Mr. Chair, would you like a motion here to, to include these for now, and then? I, I think that's I think that's right. Unless there's unless there's uh, the members feel differently. I, I you know out of deference to the planning board, I'd like to include these now, and then if they tell us that they either aren't ready or can't, we can, we can vote to uh, take them out. So, yes. It's a long so way of saying yes. <laughs> I'll make a, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 10 of the General <coughs> Bylaws, known as the Zoning Bylaw, by adding a new subsection E to Section 8, to be entitled Planning Board Associate Member. 
Can I stop there? I need to read the whole body of it, Kevin. You think I need I, to? I think I think that's a, and, and 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 the and the rest of the article as written. And the rest of the article is 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 written. That's sufficient, Second. isn't it? Kevin? I think that's okay. All right. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. So going next, Mr. Chair, the next one would be, I'd make a motion to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 11 of the General Bylaws by adding a new Section 4. And that would be Section 4, that the Planning Board Associate Member is hereby established per Massachusetts General Law, <coughs> Chapter 48, Section 9 of the Zoning Act. And then to include the rest of the body of the paragraph. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And then Mr. Chair, the last one would be make a motion to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 10 of the General Bylaws, known as the Zoning Bylaw, by striking Section 4B, quote, wetlands regulations in its entirety, and to act on anything relative relating thereto. And this is submitted by the Planning Board. I'll second it for discussion. Can we ask Town Council, do you have any knowledge? Or if you had spoken with the chair of the planning board, do you know if this is a controversial issue or if this is just, are they looking to add something later on or is this unnecessary? My understanding is that it's unnecessary that the wetland regulations already exist in a separate section of the bylaws oh, okay. under the Conservation Commission. This is more of an administrative thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Uh, the 12th. Uh, article for consideration is a citizen's petition and um, uh, this uh, if if we have 100 certified signatures uh, then it would go on the warrant uh, regardless of what uh, what we have to say and, and uh, so I guess the question is is this one uh, does this one have the 100 signatures the signatures are being vetted today it was dropped okay. off Midday today, All right. by Mr. Whiteside. So this is the this is the citizens' petition to um, for to instructing this board uh, to um, petition the general court, the the legislature, the Commonwealth, to establish a motor vehicle speed limit of 25 miles per hour for the approaches to the intersection of Route 28 and Chickatawbert Road in Milton, and for the intersection itself itself, and to act on anything relating thereto. That is the petition and the the uh, that will go on the warrant uh, if the s signatures are certified I don't know that we need to take a take a position on it so, uh, unless I'm told differently mr. Wells so my question is I don't know if we have the authority to do this does the top this is a state highway regulated by the state by mass dot all the all of the speed limits there are laid out per state regulation under Chapter 90, I just don't know how we as a town have the authority to change it. Well, what, what, what they're asking us to do, what the, what the, the article is... I don't think the general court could do it. Well, that may be right. The, the article instructs us to petition the general court to do it. Um, if it were to pass town meeting. Yes, exactly. That's right. Um, uh, Mr. Freitag, I don't know if you have uh, thought. I mean, I know this just came in today, so I, I don't I mean to put you on the yet. spot. Okay, Sorry, all right. I don't, but it's but the I'm approaches, at... though, right? It's not actually Route 28. It's not Randolph Ave. It's the approaches. We, we don't have jurisdiction on either one. Right. Chickatow is a DCR road. 28 is a state right. highway. That's so right. as it appears on the agenda, let me read this. It just says the approaches to intersections of Route 28. I mean, that could be uh, Hillside. Two. All right. twenty eight. The entire twenty eight column is a state highway. Even though we call it Randolph Ave, it's it's Route twenty eight. I understand that. I guess I'm and, and maybe I'm confused or maybe it's just worded awkwardly, but it says the approaches to the intersection, so it's all the streets that lead into Route twenty into Randolph Ave. They're which already just, asked, they're already at twenty five. Which, which are just our which streets are, are all twenty five. Well I mean I think I interpreted the approaches to the intersection to mean those four approaches. I did two too. from Chickatabit and two from twenty eight. I do too. Okay. Yeah. I, I was under the understanding that he was referring to every road that feeds into Route twenty eight. So it would be like Nahanton. Already twenty five. Those are all 25 already. But I don't, I mean, it'd be interesting. I just don't know how, it, to me, I just, I just almost view it as like, it's a, it's a community with itself. It'd be like us trying to say, 
what the speed limits are going to be in Randolph. We don't have authority to do that. Yeah, the but article actually, you're right, says Chickatawba, exclusively Route 28 yeah. Chickatawba. All right. Ms. Uh, Ms. Uh, Collins? Items different. Yeah, no, that's fine. Ms. Collins? Um, oh, yeah. I thought you had. Uh, no, no. I, I mean, I, I interpreted it the same way that you, you did. I, I realize maybe it's, it could be worded better, but. But so we're getting to the merits of it. It's really just a matter of whether we right. include it tonight. That's right. So, I mean, I, I don't see any harm in having a motion to include it, assuming that we. You're assuming that the signatures are certified. I think that's right. So okay. maybe we have a motion pending so certification of the signatures. Yes. Yeah, so I'll move that we that we include in the warrant for the special town meeting the citizens petition contingent upon 100 resident signatures being certified by the town clerk. Second. Motion's, second. Motion's been second. made and seconded. Any further discussion? Just one question. How long do they have to get the, I thought they have the, they didn't have to have the signatures in by today? Wait. No, they had the signatures. There was 149 signatures. All right, okay. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Uh, that is it for the town meeting articles. And so before Mr. Freitag leaves, uh, without objection, I would like to go to item 15, um, which is the East Milton Deck Air Rights Agreement, um, which is on for approval. Um, do you, want to, do you want a motion? Or you want to um, I'll make a motion, Mr. Chair, to yes. just for purposes. So I'll make a motion to approve the amended airspace license agreement between Masters Department of Transportation and the Town of Milton as written and approved by Town Council. Um, yeah, friendly amendment. Just motion been made and seconded. Oh, I'm just sorry. it should be. I mean, First Amendment. So I, we just want to reference it. To, correct. So it's the First Amendment to the air, air space license agreement. So I'll accept. Your friend of mine to approve the First Amendment, okay? Yeah, so to the First yeah. Amendment airspace license agreement between Masters Department of Transportation and the Town of Milton is written and approved by Town Council. Second. Oh, somebody's already seconded it. No. Okay. Well, you did actually. Okay. <laughs> I, well, okay. I thought you did. Okay. Maybe, but whether you did, now you, you did have. now. Now you have. Motion has been made and seconded. Can we just um, uh, have just a, a, a brief synopsis of what this will accomplish from either Mr. Denny or Mr. Fry Tag or? Um, I, I, I know, Kevin, this wasn't yours, so I don't want to put you on the spot. Uh, um, uh, maybe Ms. Conlon, uh, uh, we've been involved in this, or I can do it. Um, uh, well, I know that it originated with the, board, the prior board's request that we make sure that we, it was very clear to all parties involved that we have the authority down the road mm -hmm. at, at any time to reopen Adam Street on the deck. So whether it's 10 years, 50 years, or 100 years from now, we want to be sure that, that the town has that right. So. So that's now enshrined in this First Amendment. So thank you to Kevin and John for their efforts. And that's the effect of this. And my understanding is that this uh, this language, the language of this First Amendment, has been negotiated with the um, the uh, Department of Transportation. And so uh, so if we approve it, then um, then it should be uh, should be signed by both parties. So uh, we will affect what the prior board wanted to accomplish with this amendment. So. Um, motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, thank you, Kevin. You're welcome, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you. Can I just add, there was a lot of work done by Mr. Freitag in the last 24 hours to get all these uh, town meeting articles up to speed. So, um, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thank, thank you. you. Good, night. Good night. All right, moving back on the agenda. Um, yeah, Mr. Hiss, uh, I guess going back in order uh, to number 10, which is a airplane, um, airplane issues statement. Um, and um, so um, the, the genesis of this uh, uh, resides with uh, Ms. Conlon and myself. Um, uh, there has been uh, uh, of uh, recently some, um, uh, at least in my view, some misinformation that has been published about what the board has been doing on um, excessive airplane traffic um, and some inflammatory rhetoric that uh, accompanied that. And so um, um, I think it's fair to say that Ms. Conlon and I thought it's it important that um, the public uh, and the residents uh, have a clear idea of what's been going on for the last few months uh, with respect to airplane issue, airplane traffic, and what the plan is. Uh, and you know that could be gleaned from listening to our meetings and 
and uh, at different times and different agenda items, but we thought it, it made sense for those residents particularly, and this is addressed, in my view, particularly to those residents who are suffering and who've been suffering uh, for years and uh, who in some circumstances, I think, are in despair because there has been um, no uh, positive movement on this uh, for a long time, despite the complaints, uh, despite the efforts. Uh, and so, um, so I think it's fair to say, and you can correct me, Katie, I, I think it's fair that we thought it's important for people to know what's been going on and what the plan is, and that's what the, that's what the, the effort is with this statement. So, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve publishing an airplane issue statement on behalf of this board in response to inaccurate information that was recently published with respect to the town's request and recommendations report for Block 2 and to update Milton residents with respect to recent efforts to combat excessive airplane traffic. Seconded. A uh, motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So that is that. Uh, item item 11. 11, which is uh, update of the draft letter to the um, Executive Office of Environmental Affairs on the Logan uh, Airport 2017 ESPR, the Environmental Status and Planning Report letter. Um, and I can take this, or Katie, if you want to, you want me to take it. So, so um, um, uh, we have circulated a draft of this, um, circulated to the ANEC. Um, we talked about it briefly, I believe, at our last meeting. It, it had been due in Oct early, uh, early October. It's, the due date has now been extended to November 18th, I believe. Uh, and so, um, so this board um, will need to take action on it. The last meeting that we have before November 18th is on November 6th. Uh, and so uh, you have the draft as it stands. Um, we are awaiting any additional comments from uh, ANIC members or anyone else to see if we include that in our draft in, in the letter to um, to the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs. So um, uh, I think that's where that stands, and you have the draft letter. Any questions, comments, thoughts? I still have some comments on it, too, <laughs> to Kara's North, our attorney, so yeah. I'm a little late getting them in. But I, and I think the ANEC, ANEC, the Airplane Noise Advisory Committee members may have some comments as well. Right, right. And, we, and, and, and so hopefully those comments will come in sooner rather than later. Uh, and then we'll be in a position to um, to take action on this on November 6th. So we'll have it on the agenda for November 6th. All right. Um, uh, item 12, we're going to defer. Item 13, <coughs> confirming future meeting dates. Um, the dates that we have, let me just check this. Um, the dates that we have. Um, November 6th, November 20th, December thank you. 2nd, <laughs> December 3rd for a special town meeting. And uh, we'll all meet here December 24th at 8 o'clock. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, in December 18th, 2019, to conclude our calendar year uh, absent. All right. Any uh, thoughts, comments, concerns about those dates? We're going to add Monday night. Monday the night. The 29th. Okay. The 29th, yes, that's right. And we're going to have the joint public hearing with ANAC on, in this room on November 14th. November 14th, that's right. And we had to get off the second and fourth Wednesday schedule due to Thanksgiving and Christmas. Right. So we're gonna go first and third Wednesdays in November and December. Okay. Okay. Well, November, uh, what day is it? Uh, the 28th, I oh, believe. Oh, okay, yep. right on, gotcha. Yep, we're good. Yep. Okay. 28th, uh, yeah, Monday the 28th. Sorry, I said 29th. No, no, I'm, I'm, he was asking when Thanksgiving ends, which oh. is Thursday, the November 28th. Did, did we so, I thought I said no, October, no. I think I said October 29th, it's actually October 28th. Yeah, October Monday. 28th is Monday, that's Sorry. correct. Mr. Wells? Did we not schedule something for November 14th? That's the, uh, the joint meeting with the ANAC. Okay, that's it, that's it. I know, so should I? 
That should be. I, that should be listed as well. Then yes. I knew we had. I had the 14 listed. Okay. That's right. Okay. All right, Ms. Collins. Um, she wants more. No, I, 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 I think I can ask this question since we're having a joint meeting. Uh, is there a joint agenda being developed, or is it more of a hearing style? It was just. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, I was at the last ANAC meeting, and ANAC is planning uh, an agenda and planning, uh, you know, how it would uh, take place. And I think, you know, the under my understanding is it's kind of a town hall where, you know, we would report on what's what we know and what's happening and what's planned, and then hear from the residents mm -hmm. about what they want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. do you think we should do it here? Or do we need to That's the plan. Or, the plan. Is, is yeah, the yeah. plan is to do it here. Okay. Thank you. All right, um, uh, item 14, 131 Elliott Certificate of Completion. I believe this is you, Mr. Dennehy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Stephen Conley from Carrick Realty we had reached out to me uh, as a part of the special permit uh, for 131 Elliott. Uh, there was a certificate of completion that needs to be in recordable form um, that needs to be issued by this board. Um, we talked to town council. Um, Building Commissioner Joe Prondack has a software system um, that does that. Um, they found that that uh, document would suffice for this board to issue that certificate of completion now that the building is down. And I'm sure all of you have seen the construction work going on down there, mm -hmm. which is great news. So uh, it has passed and it's uh, final, uh, stamped by Joe Prondack on October 17, 2019. Mr. So Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the certificate of completion for the demolition and removal of the building at 131 Elliott Street, Milton, on October 17, 2019, in accordance with the requirements of the Massachusetts State Building Code 780 CMR as amended. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any uh, discussion? Another step in the right direction. Um, and another great step in the right direction, I think. So uh, as, we, as we move toward having... Uh, uh, something in that uh, space. So, uh, good news, I think. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Item 16, I th think we're going to defer the discussion. Mean, we already talked about the harbor master position. Do we? Are we uh, yep, so anything fine. further to be? De we're going to defer on that. So, we'll defer item 16. Moving on to item 18, which is meeting minutes, approval of meeting minutes. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from March 27, 2019, April 10, and April 24, 2019, as amended. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Moving on to item 19, Mr. Dennehy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. Um, I mentioned the Brian Carlson bench dedication. I just want to reiterate that. It's going to be Saturday, uh, November 2nd at 12 noon. Uh, public are welcome. Uh, should be a great day. Um, hopefully the sun is shining brightly. Um, Friday night, the undefeated Milton Wildcats football team takes on Newton North at Brooksfield, um, 7 p.m. I think that's uh, anybody who hasn't been up there. Um, I have a freshman in high school now. It's quite the atmosphere. Um, I don't know if there's any tailgating involved with the freshmen up there. We hope not, but um, no, it's Friday a great night. night and football team's uh, really doing good. They've played the last couple of games on the road, so this is the first time they've been uh, they've had a home game. So um, we'll go up there Friday night and root them on. Um, series of other events is a busy weekend coming up. The uh, want to thank the Chamber of Commerce once again for putting on the uh, Halloween stroll uh, in East Milton. That's this Saturday from two to four. Um, earlier that morning is the National Prescription Drug Take Back, which will take place, uh, as former chief knows, over at the police station. Front I believe line. that's from 10 to 2. Um, we have the Monster Dash on uh, 10 a.m. Sunday, starting at Cunningham Hall. Uh, we have a flu clinic here, October 29th, in the Council on Aging from 4.30 to 6. And I would be remiss if I did not... Um, promote the Veterans Appreciation Luncheon, which is going to take place on Thursday, November 7th. Um, there are tickets still available. Uh, Director Mary Ann Sullivan uh, wanted everyone to know you can RSVP by calling the Council on Aging at 617-898-4893.
transportation is available. Uh, it's a sit-down turkey dinner, and uh, entertainment will be provided by the BC High Choir. Big shout out to Pat's Pizza, who do that dinner for her. I believe it's Pat's yes. that does yep. that for her every year. Great. Um, all right. Um, item 20, the chair's report. Um, the item that I have listed under here is a Route 138 update. Unfortunately, uh, or fortunately for me, last night I was uh, unable to attend the 138 update because I was attending a uh, Milton National Little League Awards banquet uh, uh, for the uh, award winning teams of last summer. So I wasn't able to be there. So, so I, I, I'd like to have, ask someone who was there, <laughs> since I wasn't, uh, to a, give us a quick, quick, anyway quick, up, to quick update on the 138. Uh, uh, 138 uh, presentation. Mr. Dennehy, do you yeah, want to, Mr. Wells? Why don't you do it? Yeah, I, I arrived a little bit late, but Mike Trepania, who uh, led the discussion for the uh, potential roundabout or improvements to the Randolph uh, Avenue Chickatawbit um, intersection, uh, led the discussion along with um, several members of Howard Stein Hudson. I think they did a very good job of talking about the overall size of the project. It's a nine mile project. So what they've, what, they, what they've done and what they did in that presentation was break it down into six segments and then went, went into charrettes after they gave the um, major overview of the project. I think that was very well received because there were a lot of people um, in attendance from um, Milton, on the west side of Milton, people from uh, Canton. So there were certain segments of the population that only cared about certain parts of that construction process. So again, hats off to MassDOT and, and, the, and the presentation. Um, I did receive an electronic copy of that, and we'll be posting it on the town's website and in social media tomorrow for more questions. And um, they are working through a survey and taking comments as they did uh, with the presentation that they gave here. Um, but I thought it was very well done. Um, the fact that they they broke that nine mile project into six segments um, basically touched upon each part of that project and how it affects certain parts of our community and, and surrounding neighborhoods as well. As we know, that's. That's a, that's a regional road uh, in need of um, upgrade for yeah. all modes of traffic. They did touch upon that. They're talking about uh, dedicated bike lanes and raising, some, um, raising the roadway a little bit in certain parts to make it more accommodating for pedestrian mm -hmm. access. There are certain stretches of that road that does not have pedestrian access. So um, I think they touched, touched upon everything. Um, I know there were several members of the board there. Mm -hmm. if, if I missed anything or... Um, I was just, I was happy to see, um, particularly for us, um, their concerns and their awareness on the lower end of Blue Hill Avenue, Tucker, and that's a dangerous crossing every day, Robin Street. That infrastructure lighting system is so antiquated, it's broken so many times, it doesn't work more than it works. Um, the only two things that they were unaware of that I made note of and was sent to Mr. Clark to send to Mike, uh, um, all of our intersections are looking at major upgrades, but they need to be aware that Bradley and Atherton potentially will be doing a new school will be there and a new firehouse, and they're unaware of that. So I think we just need to put that on their on their radar so they're aware of that. Yeah, they, they actually are now. They know it now? Bill uh, Brought it and up I last were night. talking to, yeah, but it's always good to reiterate things mm. because just because we talked to one person doesn't mean that it will necessarily go where it needs to so I, I think the, the more the better and I, I I was wondering could we put that QR code or whatever it is uh, for the the survey up on the town website somewhere so people can take the survey sure. um, I, I thought the charrette idea was was great and um, and worked well although I didn't see anyone using their their red and green dots I think it's too early in the process I do too for yeah. that um, but I think they got good feedback yeah, I think the overwhelming questions at the end was when, mm. how long, and how much. Because uh, MassDOT spent a lot of time in this community recently, and we really appreciate that. This is, this is a major corridor. I mean, they're, they're talking about off-ramps and on-ramps from a you know, major interstate and the effects that that has on, on traffic, not only on 138, but if people don't get off 138, I think they go uh, east, northeast a little bit and jump off at 28, and the impacts that it has both in Canton, Stoughton, Milton, and surrounding communities, so a um, lot, lot more to do with this project, but I, th I thought it was a very good pre-25% design. Uh, I mean, am I 
Uh, we talk, we're talking like $100 million, right, total project around that? Nine-mile project, that, that, that's, a, that's a lot of money. I know it is. Th this is probably one of the biggest. Th but they definitely were throwing everything out at us. I, I mean, it was, for our first time out, I was impressed with I where know, they came at it. I know they came before, the, or we, we saw a, at least a piece of it in front of the Traffic Mitigation Committee because that's one of the hot spots that we have in right. town. And so we saw a piece of it some months ago. So, um, so, uh, so anyway, <coughs> I, think, uh, I think it's good that they're involved in it because uh, because it's you know it, there's not a whole lot we can do with that. It's their right. road. So, um, all right. Well, that was a very passive chair's report. Um, which is which is fine. Uh, the members, so we have one. Uh, Chair, can I add one oh, more? Mr. Denny. One more thank you to Fuller yeah. Village for hosting. Oh. Deb Felton and the group up there. Yeah. I mean, it, it was so well attended. They were literally bringing chairs in as the speakers were speaking. So it was very well attended. I know it was a rainy night. Um, thank you to all the people that showed up, and thanks to Fuller Village for hosting. Great. Um, members' reports. Um, Ms. Uh, Collins? Mr. Farrington? Nothing. Ms. Conlon. I just wanted to give a brief update on the Master Plan Implementation Committee meeting from Monday night, um, just to let the board know that we voted to submit two budget requests um, to the planning board and to this board. One is for $85,000 from the MPIC budget for the townwide traffic model for beta, mm -hmm. and $7,500 from our $30,000 budget um, for to um, the Master MAPC, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council for the planning for land use for the, and traffic flow for the Civic Center. So those requests are going to be coming to us and to the planning board. Um, the, the planning board's also planning a steering committee for the East Milton zoning, so we appointed Dick Burke to that committee as the implementation committee's representative. And there was some discussion that the chair brought up regarding an article in the Milton Times um, that the Chamber of Commerce is looking to, for a, a two-hour parking in business districts, which I know was on our agenda back in the summer. Um, and she sent an email that I think has been forwarded to everybody, but the committee um, had a little bit of a discussion about that in our general traffic discussion, and um, the committee was opposed to that. So I think if, if there is a presentation by the chamber at some point, we, we may want to invite the chair of the implementation committee at least to be given an opportunity to weigh in. I think, I think uh, my thought on that was that we would uh, put it on the agenda for either the 6th or the 20th, November 6th or November 20th, um, at that point, perhaps the planning board will have weighed in. I think they're going to put it on their agenda so we can get the, this board's uh, desire back in the summer was to get um, input from the planning board and from others who may be impacted by it. And so, um, so that's, it's, it's good to hear that we, we, we're going to get the impact or we're getting the, the feedback from the MPIC. Um, and then we'll get the, uh, hopefully the feedback from the planning board so we can take some action on this um, on either the 6th or the 23rd. I just um, wanted to put that out. Yep. Um, Mr. Chair, if I might, yeah, one more. Mr. Denny. So I, I wasn't able to attend the Mike's 5K mm -hmm. on Saturday. I'm not sure who was there, but there was an unfortunate incident that we need to compliment the Milton police officer, specifically Patrolman Patney and Matt Mercer, um, a participant and who happens to be a resident of the town, uh, suffered cardiac arrest on Brook Road. Uh, the immediate work of Officer Nee to initiate CPR and Officer Mercer to initiate his defibrillator um, saved the gentleman's life. So um, I, I think that needs to be acknowledged. It was, uh, from what I understand, a pretty scary incident as people were, you know, working their way through the race. But um, by all accounts, the, the gentleman, they saved his life and, and he's doing much better. So um, kudos to our public safety officials. I mean, I think you saw a pretty humble Chief Grant here tonight, um, the work they did to put out many fires uh, recently in the neighborhoods and uh, the work of our uh, police officers in this town um, takes events like that to, to where they really hit home. So, And, and I, I was remiss in not mentioning that uh, I was at the start of, um, of uh, Mike's 5K and it was a great event as always. I saw Mr. Mulcahy but couldn't stay and left and did see the, res you know, the, 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 uh, the engine and the police car and their, their response. I was going the diff different way, but, uh, but it's, um, it's amazing the work they did uh, and, um, and uh, continue to do every day. So. And a gr great success, the, the Mike's 5K. Yes, so, yeah. yes, once again. again. And we'll hear about that. I think we'll probably have Mr. Mulcahy back in to tell us about that success. Um, Mr. Wells. So I have two, uh, two, two one, is on, one is listed here, one is not. My first is a congratulatory to you uh, and on your efforts on the Library Foundation Gala last week was uh,
quite a success. And um, I know you and your fe fellow members in the Library Foundation, all the trustees, Will, the staff, and they worked very hard to, uh, to put that on. I I've ascended several of these, and uh, this was the first time as my table, and my dear friend Kathy Fagan knows that I actually read the book before I went to the gala. And, uh, but it was a great book. He was a great speaker, Patrick Radkeefe. Um, Sometimes it can be a great writer and not a great speaker, but he was very captivating on both ends. So um, congratulations to you on that and all. Although you should wear that, co that outfit of yours here some night. Um, <laughs> I think, it's quite I think something retired, to see. I think we retired that. I didn't believe it when they told me it was you, that. but it was in fact you. Um, <laughs> I think we retired that. And then finally, on a more serious note, uh, October is Domestic Violence Month. And if you know what, I'm wearing a purple tie tonight, as is Mr. Zulis. And, uh, Purple is the color that is clearly um, just as pink as with breast cancer, purple is with domestic violence. And as we saw just recently in Abington a week ago, and domestic violence and domestic homicides continue to plague not just our Commonwealth, but the, the, the country as a whole. And um, I just wanted to make that out. It's a very difficult time. One of the things I always said as chief is that even in a community as ours, you can ride around a police car all day long if you want, and you may not even see a domestic violence incident, yet they do occur and they do happen. And they do sometimes, as I just referenced the Abington case, have really horrific outcomes. So um, for everyone in the police department, the DV advocates, everyone at Dove, um, people at the hospital, people who were even in the schools who work so hard to bring DV awareness, this is something um, very close to my wife. She's worked very hard on this for most of her career. As I can't even count how many victims that she's handled and, and worked with. Um, I think it's important that we make notice of this as we come to the end of October. So thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Mr. Wells. Um, public comment response. We didn't have any public comment tonight, so I don't believe there's any response. Future agenda items. Uh, anyone? Ms. Collins? Nothing that we haven't Nothing, talked about. Anything, anything, uh, Mr. Wells. Just one, and this is from Ms. Collins. <laughs> Let's stay on the uh, governance, the four acres. Ah, uh, yes, we yes, stay on we're, we're, we're that waiting for the- neighborhood is getting bigger, and every yeah. week I go up, it's I, bigger. I know, so. I know. Well, we're, we're waiting for the architect to come back okay. with a full package, so. Um, I'm ready to go. Uh, Julie, Just tell me Julie, when to, when Julie to, Kramer when, when to be is really she's she's been she's been requesting that as soon as it, it can come in that that, uh, that it does. But yes, we uh, I hear you. Okay. All right. Anything else? All right. Um, community happenings. Um, Mr. Denny, he mentioned several of these, uh, including the uh, East Milton Stroll on this Saturday from 2 to 4. There is a Halloween event at Hutchinson's Field. Uh, Trustees, yeah. Um, from uh, 4 to 6, so you can hit the Halloween stroll from 2 to 4 and hit the Halloween event at Hutchins, 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 <coughs> pardon me, Hutchinson, Hutchinson's Field uh, from 4 to 6. Uh, on that same day, uh, after you go to the Halloween event on Hutchinson's Field at 7 o'clock, you can go to the Milton Club, where the Milton crew will be holding their Cornhole fundraiser, which, I've, which is interesting to see what 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 a cornhole fundraiser would be. But I'm sure it's going to be a great event. They're have a great you, have group. Have you ever been to one? I never have. They're awesome. All right. I've been to several. They're All right. awesome. All right. So so it'll be awesome at the Milton Club on Saturday night. Um, uh, Monster Dash has been mentioned uh, this Sunday. Uh, Mr. Denna, he mentioned the flu clinic next Tuesday um, at the Council on Aging from 4:30 to 6. Uh, on Thursday, November 7th, the Forbes House Museum is, is, <coughs> is hosting their annual Kichong dinner at the, uh, dinner at the Wollaston Golf Club. Uh, Monday, November 11th is our Veterans Day observance here on Town Hall at 11 a.m. I believe the speaker is, is going to be a veteran of the Iraq uh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Toto. Iraq War. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so we're looking forward to that. I believe the procession will start around 10.30 at the high school. We're going to the high school first, right? High school, yeah. yeah. High school first, around, yeah. yeah. High, high school, school first, first and, then, and, then, uh, and then Town Green. And then, as we mentioned, uh, on Thursday, November 14th, we'll have the airplane, uh, airplane, um, uh, uh, airplane traffic town hall here at 7 p.m. 
Uh, anything further? It's 8.59. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. second. Motion has been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very so, yeah, much. This may be your earliest meeting. It may, it, and, I'm, and I'm feeling pretty good. We, um, we will see you again on uh, November 6th. Thank you very much. Thank you.